we look at five components of practice. Because anything that you want to get good at, you need to practice. True? True? You have to practice. There's no way to get good at anything without practicing. If it's driving a car, if it's playing an instrument, if it's learning a language, you have to practice, yes? But sometimes there are people who believe that some persons are born with a talent and that's what makes them who they are. True, all of us are born with a certain amount of potential, yes? Potential, and then we have to practice in order to get better. If we never practice or if we never try to use that potential, we would never get anywhere. And therefore, there are some things that you need to take into consideration when you are practicing. Like one, when you are practicing, you need to be very specific. A farmer wouldn't go to his field and plant some tomatoes if he wants peppers. True? He would plant peppers. Or he wouldn't plant a mango tree if he wanted to get apples. So you have to be specific. You have to be deliberate. The next thing about practice, you want to be consistent. Because when you're consistent and you're showing up not only once per week or once per month, but every day for yourself, you will begin to make progress. If you're only doing it mm, when you feel like, then you won't really progress as fast as you can, and then, or as you could. And then the next thing that you want to do is to make a plan. Make a plan of action. How are you going to accomplish this particular thing that you are doing or about to do? You need a strategy. Because the greatest and best athletes, they don't go to practice and just practice any random thing. Because if you practice random stuff, you will get random results. It's like throwing rice on a wall, hoping some will stick, yes? And so a lot of people go into practice and of the five components that I'll share with you, most people only use two of the components of practice and they think that they are practicing, but not necessarily. And what most practitioners also do, let's pretend that this is a battery, okay? A battery. Something that you put into a device and it will make work, okay? So right here is 100%, right here is 50%, and right here is zero. So what most people do when they're practicing is they go into the practice room fully charged up and ready to do what they're doing. But instead of making the best use of the components, all they do is practice their routine or routines, right? Something they already know. And if that's all you're doing, practicing the thing that you already know, you're not really going to make any progress. And that's why a lot of people, they hit a brick wall or a glass ceiling and they plateau and they wonder why they're not making any progress. So the first component of practice is learning. Everybody say learning. Learning, learning. very good. You can't practice something that you don't know. You have to learn it first. Yes? If you're baking a cake, you need to learn about the ingredients. You need to know about the amount of time it will take. You need to know the mixture before you can start practicing it, before you can start getting better. So you need to learn, but we all learn differently. As a musician, I use my ears a whole lot because I have to listen to music, yes? So for me, I am an auditory learner, but I also learn with my eyes. Some of us are visual learners. We have to see the words on a page, or we have to see the thing in order to grasp the information. And then there are those of us, we are kinesthetic learners. You have to touch it. You have to feel it in order for it to be assimilated and for it to make sense to you. So based on your learning style, that is the way you want to approach learning what you're learning. The language, playing the instrument, or learning that skill that you are seeking to get better at. 
And the great Bruce Lee said it well. He says, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So the second component of practice is repetition. Everybody say repetition. 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 You have to repeat it because when they were creating the light bulb, yes? It didn't take them once or twice times. They had to do it a thousand, ten thousand times. When you think about your country, there are things here that you have developed because they have repeated it over and over and over until they have perfected it. Yes? So you have to repeat it because repetition is the mother of mastery. You can't do something once and get it right. I don't know anyone who does something once and gets it right the first time. Nobody. You always have to do it over and over and over until you get it. But most people only repeat stuff in the practice room. And it's one of the two things that they do when they're practicing. And that alone is sort of limited. Okay? The third component of practice is feedback. Everybody say feedback. feedback. Very good. So the first essence of feedback is that of getting feedback from yourself. So you are learning the skill, you're learning the language, you are learning the instrument. You take your phone out and you make a video so that what you practiced yesterday, today, you can look back at it and say, okay, this was what I did yesterday. How am I better today? If you never have a reference of yesterday, how can you compare yourself? How do you know you're getting better? So therefore, the first type of feedback is to record yourself. Record your voice, practicing the speech, or whatever it is that you're doing. The second form of feedback is having a friend, a teacher, a mentor, parents, somebody who will give you some sort of feedback as to how well you are doing. Yes? So that is going to help you to make your path a little smoother. So you're going to do the presentation or the speech or the poem. You read it in front of somebody or make the presentation before somebody and ask them, how do I sound? What can I be better? And then the third form of feedback is when you get on stage. Yes? When you get on stage or you are out in public and you are now demonstrating what you've learned, you're now using it and the public will either applaud you or not. So that's the third form of feedback. So what are three components already of practice? One, first one, learning, learning. Second one, repetition. And the third one, feedback. Very good. And the fourth is rehearsal. Whenever you're going to present something, you have to rehearse. Yes? Without the rehearsal, polishing that which you know to make it better, you won't do a good presentation. But most persons are stuck at the repetition level and the rehearsal level. So when they get into practice, all they do is repeat stuff and rehearse the things that they already know. But that in and of itself is too limited. And then the fifth element of practice is mastery. Because everything that you practice is leading to mastery. You want to be eventually able to just speak and the language falls out of your mouth and you are able to communicate effectively. You want to just take up that instrument and play it and people are mesmerized by your sound, your beautiful sound, right? But going back to my previous point, most persons go into practice and they practice their routines, things they already know. But what you want to do is, let me erase a part of this, is to use the first 75% of your practice time. So let's say, let's say this is 25%, okay? And all of this is 75%. What you want to do is instead of practicing your routines first, you learn. 
So you learn new things that you've never yet done before. New words, a new piece of music, a new way to cook, whichever. First, and then you add your routines last. That way you are in a mode of constant progress. Constant progress. Otherwise, if you're only doing your routines all the way here, you are just repeating the same old stuff. But when you are learning the new and then adding in the routines, the things that you already know, which you are hoping not to forget, you will always make progress. Progress is guaranteed. So if it's new vocabulary, learn those first. If it is, like I said before, a new tune, a new melody, uh, cooking, if it's drawing, painting, whatever it is that you like to do, learn the new stuff first, and then you follow with the routines afterwards. Yes? So I hope that these few points will help you as you seek to get better, so eventually you can become a master.